Hey wine snobs, welcome to another episode of Wine Snob TV. Today we're going to look at one of the tools that are essential to any wine enthusiast out there. Um, there's a lot of tools and options out in the wine industry uh, and uh, some of them or a lot of them are probably more snake oil than anything, not very effective. Um, but there are a few tools that I've found to be very useful. Today we're going to look at one of them, the Coravin. So we're going to talk about what the Coravin is. We're going to look at some use cases where the Coravin is um, almost indispensable. We're also going to look at a couple use cases <laughs> which perhaps aren't the most ideal for a Coravin. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some humorous stories and some, uh, some things I've found along the way. And most importantly, we're going to talk about care and upkeep of the Coravin. Things you might want to keep in mind which you may not hear about out there while shopping for a device such as the Coravin. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. So what is the Coravin? Well, what you're looking at here is the uh, Coravin essentially. This is the limited edition, um, but for all intents and purposes, all versions, all trims of these uh, function the same. This one just has a little more um, higher end finish on it and, uh, and an interesting, more luxurious color scheme, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it. But essentially, the Coravin is a device used to siphon um, wine out of a corked bottle. So this is an important distinction. I don't think you can use this to siphon wine out of a twist, uh, twist cap. <laughs> um, something to think about. Um, however, corks are still uh, fairly prevalent, either natural or synthetic corks, and this works just fine with either one. Um, it's a device that uses a needle right here, as you can see, um, to siphon wine through the cork. So by inserting this into, you can see the needle right here, by inserting this into the cork and then replacing the wine with an inert gas such as argon. In this case it is argon. There's a canister of argon in here and depending on what trim of Coravin you purchase, um, they will often come with a canister of argon. In this case the limited addition came with four canisters of argon, which was convenient, um, but you don't have to do that. You can buy refills as well separately. So this is about the only device I've found that does this, and um, it is highly effective at doing that, um, and uh, very reliable I've found. I've been using Coravin for several years now, different versions, and they all work the same. Um, so, like most of the tools and accessories that I would recommend here, um, I actually prefer to make sure I have first-hand experience for at least a year or more um, before I can actually recommend them to my viewers and readers. The Coravin is definitely one of them. Um, it's a great quality, ingenious device. I wish I'd come up with it myself. <laughs> But someone else has done a pretty good job of it, and uh, I think it's worth the investment. So, let's talk use cases. For me personally, I think the core of it, um, where it really shines, is having a cellar and a reserve with a very deep reserve of very unique wines. Um, I, I travel a lot for wine, I do wine tastings, I go off the beaten path to places that often won't even ship the wine. So it's very important when I collect and build these verticals of wine. Um, for me, it's very important that I open and take a look at these wines when they are at their peak expression. That's my goal with cellaring. Um, other folks have different goals, but for me, it's very important for me to catch the wine when it is just right. And that's where the core then comes in. I can, from time to time, take a pour, a couple ounces, out of a bottle and evaluate that wine 
and make notes um, or tag that bottle as to when next I feel um, would be ideal to open that wine. A couple of those, a couple of those tastings will easily give you a return on that investment. Um, especially if you're talking some very unique artisan wines, you know, anywhere from 30 to 60 or more dollars a bottle, um, you can easily avoid opening um, those bottles um, entirely thanks to the Corvin. Another little known or lesser known uh, use case for Corvin, in my opinion, and from my experience, is I, I, keep a, I keep a pretty full pipeline of wines to review on the blog, on Instagram, and eventually here on YouTube. Um, I keep a fairly uh, packed lineup, but I'm starting to find that um, not all of the wines are perhaps showing at their best when they come up in the pipeline. And I recently experienced uh, uh, something of that nature, had a use case of that nature. And it was uh, last night, actually. I was looking at the pipeline for uh, about a week or two ahead. And um, there was a cab and a Petit Verdot. And I was able to you know, taste, do a quick taste of about one or two ounces and realize the Petit Verdot, which is an artisan wine that I personally bought out wine tasting um, and have been building a, ver a vertical of, I found that it could use a little more time. So I would very much prefer to open that bottle when it is showing a little better, when it's a lot more, a little more integrated, a little more composed, um, so I can really make a good recommendation to my readers um, and really look at look forward at its potential ultimately um, so that bottle got moved further down the pipeline um, so that's a great use case of the Corvin um, and something to consider um, a very typical use case that I find for a lot of folks out there is they just can't commit to an entire bottle. So you might have a really special cab, maybe that Napa cab from your trip out to California. Um, you know, rent cost you almost 100, 150, $200 a bottle or more. <laughs> and uh, you'd like to enjoy just a glass or two. Well, the Coravin can definitely help with that. With one caveat, which I'll be getting to later, um, but that's a really good example. Uh, some people don't want to commit to an entire bottle very often. Um, maybe they just, they just don't have the company or are just not as enthusiastic as the rest of us. <laughs> um, but uh, that's where Coravin really comes into play as well. Just keep in mind that the refills are, aren't necessarily cheap. So, Consider that. Um, I've seen some influencers out there <laughs> run out to the store and pick up half a case of $10 to $15 wines and come home and proceed to carve in all of them. If a canister of refill is running you anywhere from, depending on if they have sales or anything, but just assume maybe about $17 or just say $20. Why would you do that? <laughs> so it has its place as far as it's a tool that has its place and where it is most effective and can really help you in your journey in wine tasting and exploring wine. Um, so use it sparingly, use it wisely. Uh, if you're going to have a glass or two of a bottle only to turn around within a week and finish the bottle, I don't think Coravin is the tool for that. Perhaps another tool, Vacuvin, which I'll be reviewing in another video. Um, so be sure to subscribe, like, and come back 
um, we'll be talking about that as well. But a Coravin is something where you want to take a very careful look at a bottle that perhaps maybe is out of production, maybe it's a very old vintage, um, maybe it's a very special vintage to you and uh, you don't want to necessarily commit to the whole bottle now and you'd like to revisit it at a later date and time, not within the next week, um, perhaps maybe a couple months and perhaps maybe even a year or so, again with one caveat which I'll be getting to. Which leads me into the next and final section of this video, which is considerations. Things you should consider when investing in Coravin and more importantly, when using it. Winemakers far and wide across the ages have spent many a sleepless nights worrying about their vintage spoiling. This is something you should consider. A bottle of wine, corked, is for all intents and purposes perfectly sealed. Uh, yeah, it will breathe a little, but it is perfectly sealed and, and has been sterilized at the bottling, at the time of bottling. This means no undesirable foreign pests, or should I say bacteria, um, have made it into the bottle. Now, from time to time, that will happen and lead to what is often known as corked wine. Basically, it's turned to vinegar. This is something you should consider when using a device such as a Coravin. It is very important that you sanitize, you rinse and sanitize your needle after use and before use as well, but more importantly, immediately after. So one thing I like to do is I like to simply just using clean water flush the spout here and just give it a quick tap of gas to flush the needle before storing it so you don't have any buildup or caking or residue buildup in the needle and in general in the internal workings. One thing that I also do before using the Corvin is sterilize my needle. So I'm gonna show here, there's a little rubber safety cap here. And you can simply unscrew the needle and I'll rinse this and very often flush it in with either SO2 solution, sulfur dioxide solution. This is, if you've ever made, <laughs> been into home wine making you'll be familiar with that um, either SO2 solution which is what winemakers use to sterilize their equipment and the bottles uh, before bottling but you can either use that or in some cases in a pinch I'll use rubbing alcohol I'll just give it a quick flush rubbing alcohol and let it dry this is very important because before you insert this needle into your bottle, your prized vintage, you need to make sure it is absolutely clean and not tainted. It has happened at least twice before where some of my more prized vintages have become tainted after coravining a couple times, at least twice. So also keep that in mind. You probably don't want to coravin a bottle more than just a few times over its lifetime. But most of all, it's important that you wash, rinse, flush the Coravin and bef after use and before using it, sterilize your needle. It's something a lot of people don't consider with a Coravin, but I'm guessing they usually don't keep the bottle they just Coravin long enough to discover that it's tainted or it's spoiling. I have an interesting story. I was once out, I won't say where, but I was out in wine country and uh, wine tasting with some friends and uh, stumbled across this wine bar, wine lounge, that had um, just a huge selection of wines on their pouring list. I was 
taken back. And wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. They have so many wines to just to taste from not just this region, this uh, I was visiting, but from around the world as well. So I thought that was impressive. So I made myself at home at the bar and began picking from the menu. And, and the, the bar owner who was behind the bar um, was pretty stoked and proud of his contraption, which was basically a Corvin. And he had done away with the Argon canister and attached an entire 100 pound bottle of Argon. <laughs> Initially, I thought this was fairly ingenious, but as I came to find out on my third pour, as he would literally pull this Corvin from one bottle to the next, and just pouring bottle after bottle, I started realizing they all tasted the same. They tasted like vinegar. So they were all spoiling. He wasn't sanitizing the needle before inserting it into every bottle behind the bar. So essentially what had been a prized collection of wines from around the world had now become a pretty eclectic collection of vinegar. <laughs> so that is an extreme example of what Coravin is not meant to do. It's not meant to just run an assembly line or <laughs> an entire lineup of wines and just siphon wine and extract wine to your heart's content. That's not what Coravin is meant for. So please don't do that. You will be eventually sorely disappointed. So with that being said, I'm really satisfied with my experience with Coravin um, over the last several years. I think it's an indispensable tool. I have at least a few hundred bottles in the cellar of prized vintages that are no more, uh, no longer in production. The winemakers have either retired, gone out of business, or moved on in life. And um, the Coravin is a great tool to have to be able to explore those unique vintages and help me open them when they are at their peak expression. So if you have any questions about Coravin, if you're thinking about getting a Coravin, if you have other experiences with your Coravin and would like to share them, please drop them in the comments below. Send me a message. Uh, connect with me on Instagram at, at winesnob.blog. You can also be found on Twitter at winesnobblog. And uh, the blog is obviously winesnob.blog. So feel free to reach out, drop a comment below if you have any other interesting fun stories or other interesting unique use cases for your Coravin. I'd love to hear about them and uh, stay in touch. Hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, join in on the fun. Cheers, wine snobs.